Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with the imaginary unit i and the Euler's number e. So we have i to the power x equals e and we're going to be solving for x. Now, I'm also going to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha and also pose a question. So let's go ahead and start by natural logging both sides. If you ln i to the power x, that should equal ln e. And then from here, if you move the x to the front, you're going to get x times ln i equals ln e, which is 1, right? So from here, simply put, x is just going to equal 1 over ln i. Case closed, right? Well, not really. We kind of have to think about what ln i would be and write it as a complex number, okay? So the question that I would like to raise first is, what is natural log of i? All right, first of all, um, let me give you a formula that would work for complex numbers. Since you can write a complex number z as r times e to the power i theta plus 2 n pi. By the way, theta is going to be the smallest angle that satisfies this equation, but we can uh, add multiples of 2 pi to it, obviously, to get uh, the other uh, values. Uh, if you n, n equals 0 is going to give you the principal value. By the way, that's what it's called. Or the principal branch. Or the principal branch is going to actually give you the principal value. Whatever. Something like that. So, that's going to be kind of like a simplification of the problem. But that's the general solution. If you ln both sides, you're going to get the following equation from here. ln z equals ln r plus i times theta plus 2 n pi. Because ln e is equal to 1, you basically get this as a result. So this is something that you can definitely use as a formula, right? But here's the thing. We need to know two things here. n is an integer. Let me just specify that real quick. n is an integer. Uh, pi is, you already know that, and i, you already know that. Theta is the angle we talked about. So two things you need to know is one of them is r, the other one is theta. So in order to get the values of r and theta from z, which is our complex number, we need to uh, graph our complex number and get those values. In other words, we're going to put our number in polar form. Make sense? So here is how it goes. We have the coordinate system, this is the imaginary axis, and this is the real axis. So any number a plus b i can be basically graphed as a point a comma b. That's what it comes down to. Make sense? Great. So in this case, our number, uh, the number we're dealing with is i. So we're going to write i first as 0 plus 1 times i, so that the value of a is 0 in our case, and b is 1. So 0, 1 is going to be the point that we're going to look at. This is our number, or maybe I should use a different color. Let's use this one. So that's my number i. And obviously, its distance from the origin is going to determine r, and in this case, r would be 1. Okay? And the angle is basically going to be the angle between the real axis and the imaginary axis, and that will be 90 degrees or pi over 2 radius. So that's my theta, and that's my r. So I got two values. I can just plug them in. Let's go ahead and do it. ln i is going to be ln r, which is ln 1, plus i times theta, which is pi over 2, plus 2 and pi. Okay? So you could also do this. You could write your z as... 1 plus um, 0 plus 1i, and then it will be by using this formula, right? By using this, you could basically write it as 1 times e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 and pi, and then ln both sides, you would pretty much get the same thing. And this would be i, obviously, right? Cool. Now, what is ln 1? ln 1, in this case, we're dealing with a real number, okay, in the real sense ln1 is equal to 0. So this would be 0, and you're going to end up with the value of ln i in general form, which is i times pi over 2 plus 2 and pi. So in other words, 
ln i is a multiple of i. Okay, some something uh, times pi. Okay, so we can simplify this a little bit by making a common denominator. I don't know if it would be considered simplification, but let's go ahead and do it. Let's make a common denominator. That will be pi plus 4n pi over 2. And then we can factor out a pi here and write this as 4n plus 1 times pi i over 2. So that would be the value of ln i. But is that the answer? No. Because what is x? x is equal to 1 over ln i. So we basically need to look at the reciprocal, right? So what is x from here? x is going to be 1 over ln i. And the reciprocal of this expression is just going to be 2 over 4n plus 1 pi i. You don't want i at the bottom. Obviously, that's something you don't want to have at the denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply. And I know a lot of people are going to multiply by i, but I'll multiply by negative i. Why? Because i times negative i, as you should know, is negative i squared. By definition, i squared is negative 1, so this is going to be positive 1. So this is going to give us a 1 here, which is nice. And then from here, x is going to be negative 2i divided by 4n plus 1 multiplied by pi. There's no i at the bottom anymore. This is going to be our x value for n integer values. Now, if you replace n with certain values of um, integers, like n equals 0, would be the principal branch, right? We talked about it already. Then you're going to get a simplified version of x, which is negative 2i over pi. So if you plug this into our equation, remember our equation was i to the power x. And then if you replace uh, x with that, and then write the i in polar form, and you can go ahead and uh, find the answer from here. Or if you already know the value of i to the power i, then you can evaluate that and raise it to the power negative 2 over pi, and you should also get the answer from there. Okay? There's a couple ways to go about it, and you can definitely check your work. But that's just the principal branch. Cool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what Wolfram Alpha gave us, and then I'll just ask you guys a quick question. Okay? So, let's go ahead and check it out. The Wolfram Alpha gave us the following answer. i to the power x equals e i to the power x equals e, and then if you plug it in, and there's obviously some alternate forms that you can write it in, like this or like that, and we're given this type of solution. Why do you think that solution is different from what I found? And let me go ahead and write my solution here, and then hopefully you can tell me why they would look different. But one of the things that I'd like you to know, notice here, is it with the Wolfram Alpha solution, if you kind of split it up, you're going to get 4 pi n divided by pi, which is going to be 4n minus 2i over pi. And negative 2i over pi is one of the, you know, principal values that we found. They're just adding 4n to it. And remember, let me not tell you this. Maybe you're going to tell me more about it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.